Hi, my name is Karthik and I am from executeautomation.com and welcome to part 7 of our Catalan Studio video series. And in this video, we'll be talking about automating our native Xamarin iOS application in Mac operating system with Catalan Studio. And this is part B of its kind. So before watching this part, I would request you to watch part 6 since in that video, we did all the configuration in our Mac operating system before automating the iOS application using Catalan Studio. Alright, so let's get started. So for that, I'm gonna flip to our Catalan Studio. Alright, so in our previous video, we configured the whole Mac operating system which is gonna be useful for the Catalan Studio and also we configured the Catalan Studio to refer the Appium path. And today we are gonna automate a very very simple flow of the application. What basically I'm gonna do is this. I am gonna open this particular simulator and then I'm gonna hit this add button and then it is going to uh, show us the new item to be added so I'm going to add a title here as EA and EA is awesome and then I'm hit save and you can see that it has added the EA is awesome here so this is the flow which I'm going to basically perform using Catalan Studio it's kind of much simpler and easier but that's fine and it proves the point that Catalan Studio can automate the iOS application using Mac operating system right so I'm gonna go all the way to our objects by here and you can see that it has already selected the uh, add item it's not pointing out exactly the same part of the application where the add item is actually exist but it's okay for us so I'm gonna select that and I'm gonna add this to our object repository and then I'm gonna select the object repository and I hit OK so you can see that it has added the add item for us over here in the object repository right and then once it is added then I need to enter the title and description so let's try to capture the object once again and you can see that it has quickly captured things for us so now it has a little bit identifying some kind of stuff funny so this is the uh, item name text box so I actually need this guy so I'm gonna again uh, select it and also the description so I need these two guys and also the save button so I need this as well and then I'm gonna add everything to object repository in single shot there we go so all these three items are added right now so these are the four object which I'm gonna play around with and uh, let's kind of uh, stop it because I don't really require it anymore and I'm gonna close it so these are the different objects which I really require to play around right now and now I need to automate the application so how do I do that well if you watched my previous videos in Catalan studio basically we used to automate the whole application using the uh, manual view as you can see over here or with a script editor that you can see here so these are the two different views that we have for the Catalan studio out of the box and if you go with the manual it's kind of very very simple you can see that if you hit add and if you select the mobile keyword instead of the web UI keyword because a mobile keyword is where we're gonna play around with if you select the web UI keyword it is gonna use the web UI dot find object of things of that nature which is used for the web application to be automated but since we are working with the mobile application we have to choose the mobile keyword this time so I'm gonna choose that and you can see that what action that we need to perform here basically I need to click the add item button initially right so if you use the click there is nothing called click here for the mobile application so there is no click basically there is something called as tap so this is where it is going to tap within your screen of the mobile application so I'm gonna select this guy and the object basically I need to click the add item so I'm gonna select that and let's give a timeout value because it's gonna open the application for the first time so I'm gonna choose that so that is the 30 so you can see much easier much simpler it is than ever before with Catalan Studio and then I'm gonna choose one more mobile keyword and this time I'm actually gonna enter some text or send keys which is the most popular way of performing that operation so I'm gonna choose that send keys it's gonna be pretty much same for both uh, web as well as for the mobile and then I'm gonna select the item name this is the object and you can see there is the object prop parameters that you can pass in 
but I'm just going to leave that for now because we have already discussed about the object parameters and how to parameterize the object's uh, value from an Excel sheet in our previous video of this course. You can refer that and how to play around with it in much greater detail. But as of now, I'm just going to leave it and I'm going to hard code the values here. And the value is going to be, uh, let's say, EA. All right. And let's flip back to script editor because it's much easier, right? We can see mobile.tap, mobile.send key. Uh, let's copy this guy and paste it over here. And instead of the uh, XQ, uh, CUITE field of item name, if I hop back to the manual once again, and if I double click and if I select the item description, and if I go back here to the script, you can see this item description, amazing. And finally, I need to tap the save item button. So I'm going to choose that. The very easy trick that you can do is just drag it and drop it over here. You can see it will automatically bring things for you, which is also a very nice feature. So you can set the timeout to 20. It's not required, but still I'm giving it for uh, error handling purpose. So I'm going to save everything here. That's it. So this is the four lines of code that we're going to write here in the Catalan Studio to automate the iOS application much effortlessly using Catalan Studio. So let's quickly run this and see how it works. So basically for running it, you need to select this guy. If you run this by default, it's going to open the Firefox browser for you. But rather, we are going to run this in the iOS operating system. We already automated using the Android, but this time it's going to be iOS. So I'm going to choose it. And it's going to ask you which device you're going to run this particular automation. Well, we already have our uh, iOS simulator running here. So why not just try to run with the latest version of iPhone, which is the iPhone 10, which just released. And uh, we're just going to run the test on the iPhone simulator and see how our application actually works with the iPhone 10 simulator and if it runs really fine or not. So I'm going to hit OK. So this is going to spawn the test for us, but unfortunately you don't. The reason is because we just have performed the action, but we have not specified to open the application, right? And that's the reason it fails instantly here to say that the object repository has this guy, but the application has not started yet. So very, very easy to tell the root cause as well. So no application is started yet. Cool. So why not just start that? I'm going to go back to the uh, manual. So you can see that even if you forget some of the keywords, you can probably uh, use that using the keywords. And uh, let's say if there is something called start application or maybe open application. Yep, there is something called as start application. So I'm going to choose that. And here you have to pass the path of the particular application where it actually exists. So I'm going to go to the script this time and maybe I can just going to cut this code and paste it over here. The application actually sits in my uh, in my home directory. So I'm going to go over here to uh, the Xamarin UI test and it's going to be within the iOS of the debug device builds within this guy. So this is the path uh, which actually has that. So I'm going to open the terminal for now and let me drag this and paste it over here. This gives me the path and you can see still I'm very bad in getting the path in a much simpler way maybe but I am not very aware of that yet so I'm gonna go to the Catalan once again and I'm gonna paste it over here there we go so this is the application path I'm gonna save it and now if I try to run this time you can see that it is gonna launch the application on the iPhone 10 simulator and it is going to run the test for us, hopefully, if everything is fine. Let's see what's going to happen. So you can see that this is going to start the application this time instead of just failing like last time. There we go. We have our brand new iPhone 10 simulator launching it, which is really cool. There we go. And it has installed uh, the WebDriver agent this time. And it has opened the application as well. Pretty awesome, right? And we expect it to click the add item this time. Let's see what's going to happen there. There we go. Oh, there is some rendering issues here. 
Wow, nice. But still the automation is working. Oh my god. It entered both of them in the same place, which is not expected. Okay. Maybe uh, this can happen if uh, the identification is not perfect. So let's quickly see what's going on there. So if I go to the item description, mm, okay. So it has identified the element using the object repository with just the XUI element type text field. So this is the data by object, but there is no way that you can uniquely identify that this is the item description. This checkbox is unchecked here, right? So I'm going to check this guy so you can see that it is going to identify using that particular element. So I'm going to save it. And also, uh, let me go back to the test. I forgot to change one thing. It's not EA. Okay, it's EA is awesome. Let's differentiate that a little bit. And now if I try to run it again, and I'm gonna run that again in the iPhone 10 simulator, I hit okay. So there are two simulators running. One is the iPhone 10, and another one is, I guess, iPhone 8 or 7. All right. So now it has installed the application once again, and it is opening. So it's gonna click the Add Item. It's gonna enter the item name, and now the description as well. There we go. Just working fine now. Just great. So EA is awesome has entered into the description and click the save and you can see that EA and EA is awesome has come into this particular item list, which is really, really cool. That's expected. And this is how you can see that how easily you can also modify the object property within the object repository and you can identify the element much easily and effortlessly to perform the more complex operation. And if you have watched my previous videos on Appium automation with C Sharp, you know that we wrote so many code to perform these kinds of operation. But here, all these objects are pretty much sitting within this object repository and we have much effortlessly automated the whole suite in a less than five minutes, which is really cool. So that's it guys. This is how we can perform the automation of iOS application using Mac operating system. So once again, thank you very much for watching this video and have a great day.